Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm a trainer here at Park Industries, and today we're going to talk about leathering on the Voyager XP. So what we're going to look at today is the proper equipment required to leather on the Voyager XP, uh, that be, being the Blick 12 and 3 quarter inch leathering head, and then the appropriate brush, brush styles that we need to leather on the Voyager. Make sure when you're ordering your Blick leathering head that you're using a half gas adapter with left hand thread. Uh, we have a couple different options here. Uh, this is our Airflex style, and then we have a couple bristle, bristle styles. This one has included with the snail lock. The Airflex style with the Frankfurt lock is going to give us the, the maximum height uh, available for, on the Voyager to leather up to 3CM material. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to rotate the head in the A-axis to show you how close and why we require the Airflex style brushes. I'm going to rotate this at a 10% speed. That way it allows us to make sure that our clearance is going to be appropriate. So as you can see here, the Airflex style gives us maximum clearance between the top of the, uh, from the, the bottom of your brush to the table height. Now as we rotate through and we look at the bristle, bristle style with the uh, Frankfurt lock, that gets a little bit tighter. Now if you're a 2CM market, this may work for you with a little table modification. This is the same bristle, bristle style brush with a snail lock and as you can see, we are maxed out on our Z height on the Voyager table and we are already making contact so that is not going to be usable. From here, we're going to be moving on to the Setup and Advanced tab. The password is Sunrise, all lowercase letters. Within the Advanced tab, we're looking specifically at the Work Table Offset's Z value. This number corresponds with your current table height. As you mill this table, the number will become more negative. In order to maintain your tight cut ability, you do not want that number to exceed a negative 18.3 inches. Now that we have the recommended brushes installed on our Blick leathering head, we still need to be aware of our clearances. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the tool change location for the Blick leathering head. Now you want to be careful, uh, we want to stay away from the uh, factory um, set tool change location. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and simulate the A-axis rotating to show you why we want to be careful and stay away from the uh, preset location. So as you can see, as I move the A-axis and rotate it here, we're obviously going to have a collision if we would use that same tool, the tool change location. So what we actually suggest for optimal positioning, we would put that in the front, the furthest most front right corner. So I'm going to rotate this back and we're going to go ahead and jog the machine to the, the ideal location. Now also take note that because I used the tool change location to position this, our machine actually dropped down in the Z a little bit. So we're going to want to make sure before we do anything that we actually raise the machine up in the Z and max that out before we do any sort of a rotation with that leathering head. Now even picking this location, we still run the chance if we are trying to leather a, an extremely large slab. If I again go ahead and rotate this and we're going to simulate an extra large slab with this small chunk of stone here, I'm going to rotate this and we're going to see that with a larger slab, you still need to be careful using this optimal location. If you are leathering material and if you could see here off the corner, we would have a collision here if that slab was off, off the edge. Now in this kind of a scenario, the next best location to do a tool change would be in the far back corner Y positive. So just max out that Y axis all the way back and, and then we're going to go into next on how to capture that location. So now we've actually gone ahead and, and moved that head back to the furthest most front right corner and now we want to go ahead and capture that location on the machine. So what we're going to do to capture that location is we're actually going to move over to the setup tab and then set up again. Um, right here you're going to see your tool change location and it's always a good idea whenever you're changing any settings in your, 
on your machine is to go ahead and take a, a camera shot of that of those settings because that way you can always go back and and recover those values. Um, all we have to do is make sure that we're currently at the location we want to capture. So now take note that our Z value is at zero and our A value is at zero, and this is where we're actually going to make our cha tool change location. So all we need to do is capture position, and you're going to see those values change. Yes, we want to capture new, loca new location. So now throughout our entire leathering program, this is going to be our new tool change location for our Blick leathering head. Now that I've captured my tool change location, I'm going to go ahead and verify with a manual movement in my A axis to make sure that I have enough clearance in my new tool change location. So I'm just going to simply go ahead and activate my pendant, and I'm going to simply rotate that tool. And as you can see, barring an exceptionally long piece, our tool change location is valid. And note the difference in height from the uh, brushes to the top of that chunk of uh, scrap stone there. Our tool change location is good. So now that we went ahead and verified manually that our tool change location was good, um, I verified that we are at a, at a true 90 for our A axis. Now the next step is to go ahead and, and jog that uh, leather head over the top of mater the material and we're going to go ahead and touch it off to the top of the, the material. Now I'm just simply jogging over the stone and now I'm going to go back. It may be a good idea to go ahead and gauge this material if you have inconsistent thicknesses. This will assist you in having a more consistent result. Uh, with your lever leathering. So at this point, all I'm going to go ahead and do is, is use my manual pendant here, and I'm going to drop this uh, leathering head down just to the surface of the material using the slow button and the Z negative. As I get closer, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just rotate this head until I get some contact. I'm going to go a little bit lower. That sounds pretty good right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and capture that location on the machine. Now one thing to note before we move on to the tool length capture is to note that our Z value of negative .223 because that's going to be used in our programming to assign a safe rapid value. So you wanna take note of that value once your tool is set down on top of the stone and you like that length. To actually capture the length, we're gonna to go to the setup tab and down to the tools. Now we're gonna simply scroll through our tool library until we find that Blick leathering head, which is coming up here. And there we have our leathering head. And all I need to do is simply manual capture length. Yes. Go ahead and shut off my pendant. Enable my spindle. And we have our new height captured. So now that we went ahead and touched off our, our tool to the top of the stone, now we're simply going to manually jog that machine up, and then we're going to jog it back to our safe location. You do not want to hit tool change location at this point. That will result in a crash. So I'm going to manually jog this up in the Z first. As you can see, there's not much clearance, and now we're gonna go ahead and max out our Z uh, X positive and uh, Y negative here. Now at this point, we can go ahead and start the program. All I'm gonna go ahead and do, I did load that program previously, and I will start with a cycle start.
Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.